Hey, She Slayers, and welcome to another episode of She Slays the Day podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lauren Brunswick, and today it is just me. Um, there is no time for stories because this is a solo, and that means that the goal is quick. Uh, no room for Lauren to go on ADHD, like ramblings or anything like that. Um, so the reason we're doing this is I got a lot of great feedback from my um, episode on curing decision fatigue. So it's episode number 234. Uh, so you can go back, listen to that. I was in and out in 39 minutes, y'all. I had never done that before in my life. It's actually not that short of a podcast, if I'm being honest. Um, it's kind of still a lot of ramblings in there, but it was good. So the goal is like, if we can get in and out in like 30 minutes a day, I don't know. You guys, it's not going to work if I don't shut up. That's for sure. But like, definitely you, some of you really like those shorter episodes where we just get to the point. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So I can skip funny stories. I, I can skip the listener highlight. Um, I can skip upcoming events. I don't have to sell you on anything right now, but I cannot skip the prayer. This is how we all get centered, right? So we can like be conduits to receive information. And today we're gonna, you're gonna receive some shit today. So let's take a breath. Dear God, today I am answering a question from a chiropractor who has something on her heart that she wants to change for her practice so she can better serve her, her community. And we are often so afraid of making changes and what other people will think about those changes. You know, one of the things that I constantly strive for in my life um, is caring more about what you think of me than other people's opinions. And so just as people listen today, whether they're a chiropractor or not, um, if there is something on their heart, a change that they're feeling they want to make, then, you know, just give them that confidence and that, uh, I almost said virtual hug, <laughs> metaphysical hug, um, that you've got them. And that as long as they're making changes from where their heart is in the right space, that they can't fail. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. So some of you may not know this, but the podcast actually started out more of a Dear Abby style. So I was coaching for Epic at the time, unpaid coaching. And one of my favorite things was that a couple times a month, I would be in charge of leading a call for other chiropractors. And there would be kind of like a theme where we we're talking about marketing or systems and procedures. I really don't remember. It was like 2018. And I loved it. I loved giving advice. And like, I don't care what, I could give advice on anything. Unsolicited advice is like probably my number one strength <laughs> and flaw. Uh, but so when I left coaching, that was the void that I felt was just like, I just want to help chiropractors. I just want to force my opinion on people. <laughs> um, so insert write in podcast. And so sometimes I would have guests on and we would answer the question together if it wasn't like an area that I could speak on, but I really do like it. So I threw out to my Instagram stories and said, you know, hey, I'm going to be doing a solo podcast because we I don't get a lot of write-ins anymore because I don't really talk about it. Um, so if you do want to send a question, there is a spot on our website that you can send a question um, and we can have that link below in this episode, but like submit your question. And if it's something that I feel like I can put a new spin on or we haven't covered on or is in my wheelhouse, I will totally make it. And per usual, of course, they can be anonymous for sure. So I threw on stories, who's got a question, and I got a few, and this is the one that I felt the most inspired to, to talk to you all about. All right, so it says, Dear Lauren, I do require all questions start with Dear Lauren. You don't have to know how to spell my name. That's fine. Starbucks can't, um, but it is YN, just in case you were wondering. Okay, Dear Lauren, I'd love to hear how you would handle a transition from closed adjusting to open adjusting. In our current space, we have side-by-side -side closed adjusting rooms with one doctor. 
Our space also has two yoga studios that are beautiful but used minimally. If I ever had someone interested in renting space from me, hello passive income, the fastest and cheapest way for us to make that happen would be a transition to open adjusting in one of the yoga studios. I think people would freak because there's nobody that really practices like that in our area. They're used to old school neck and back pain insurance offices, but I know with great communication, it could be handled. This is a strong possibility for us in the future, so I'd love to hear your take on it, uh, Dr. McKenzie. And I love that Dr. McKenzie is thinking about how to like help bring in overhead to pay for her office. Um, she is a multi-passionate chiropractor graduate, so I don't know. I'm not going to take any credit for that, but somebody got her thinking about passive income. I don't know. Maybe it was me. Anyways, so I, in order to answer this, I think it's important that you know my story because I have done this quite a bit. Um, I've made a lot of big switches in practice. You know, we've gone from like 85% insurance to 99% cash. We, you know, and we've gone from closed adjusting to open adjusting and barefoot too. So like we have made, we've, I've learned a lot from how to communicate with patients. So we have, when we were in closed adjusting, we made the jump to more T walls. So in between there, we had like closed doors, two closed doors. And uh, when I get down into like how I would recommend this, I'll kind of give you what I did in that scenario because we did go to open adjusting with only two rooms and no big open room like you're talking about. It was, you'll see, you'll see. And then we moved clinics, so moved spacing. So for us, a lot of the times that I sprung it on people was with a move into a different location of just like, well, this location allows for this. You own your building, so you're not going to do that. So that's okay. But so when we moved locations, I really thought about like, this is a good time for me to make that change. So we moved to kind of like high T wall scenario. So we had like 10 or like 15 foot ceilings. And so the walls went up like 10 feet. It was like a loft style. And then the doors were not real doors. They were barn doors. And there was like a pass through in between each room for the doctor. So you don't have to go out into the waiting room. You could just go, so the patient leaves and you go out a different door into the next room. I did really like that setup. And we rocked that in both of our clinics for multiple years. But then when it was time for us to move into, like I bought my clinic and we were doing the big design, you know, I reflected on some of the things I didn't like about that T wall scenario, it it created a lot of blind spots for patients. So parents would be in the room, but like the kids would kind of go all over. And it was fine, but it was kind of just in between. It was, you know, and a lot of times when, and I'm so sure there are some T walls that work great, um, but for us personally, it just felt like with the new clinic, our options were going to be back to more closed rooms, which I knew I didn't want to do or open up completely. And I was nervous. I was so nervous about opening up completely for all the same reasons that you are. You know, uh, people, I, w I just wasn't sure that they were going to like it uh, at all. <laughs> and um, so what I would say is I love that you are at a point in your career where you're making a decision on what's best for your clinic. You want this. Like for whatever reasons you want it, whether it's so you can have passive income over there. Like I don't think that's just the only reason though. I can't imagine that you would do something. Like I think there's a part of you that sees other clinics doing open adjusting, obviously not in your area, and being like, that is a that's a culture, a vibe, a feel of community that I want. And I do know your clinic, so I think that's probably where your heart is coming from. And I love that you're gonna do this. Uh, I've given advice to people on starting their own practice. And there's something about when you get that like idea, it's not gonna go away. So the fact of the matter is, Mackenzie, is that like you're going to do this. You, like, it's not like you're going to be like, oh, I wish I could. Like, it's a dream on your heart. 
So the sooner you do it, like the better. Um, and I just think that it's so great that you're stopping worrying about like what my clinic should look like for my patients, what they want out of it. Any change in life, personal or professional, as you become more who you truly are, you're going to lose people who you were pretending to be something for. But the good news is, is that you're going to attract more of the people that you're actually meant to serve. So as you step into what your heart's version of serving looks like, there's just going to be this magnetism about you. I cannot promise that you won't lose patience to open adjusting. I can promise that as you become more authentically loving servant of your patients, if that's just not for them, that's okay. They weren't your people. And that's so hard when you're on the cusp of making a big decision. But like as we age, we start to make these decisions in our personal life as well. And that sometimes causes friendships to end. And that's really hard. But like, what do you do? Continue pretending to be someone so you can hold on to a friend that doesn't actually love and know you, right? Like, so um, don't make this a big deal. That's like, ultimately, what I don't want you to do is, and I don't know, this, for some reason, I feel compelled to say, this is all in my opinion, but it's my podcast. So um, do not tell them you're going to do this. Do not make this, this big deal that you need to like apologize for. We, when we were moving space for people who are like more in that scenario, we had pictures of like, what the new space was going to look like um, because people were very excited or like renderings and people would be like, oh, it looks a lot more open. And we're like, yes, it is. <laughs> and that's kind of all we would really say. But you want to make sure that any communication to a patient is excited and that you really want to address any concerns that you or your office may have because that's just going to soak into their subconscious communication. A uh, reminder when you guys are training on how we're going to talk about this to the patients, um, that this is not with never, this is with any change. If you are getting out of network with insurance, if you are raising your prices, if you are um, going barefoot, this is never about, this is my damn clinic and this is what I want to do with it. Okay. Do I think that ultimately that's what the answer is? Yeah. I do, because it is your clinic. You can do whatever you want with your business. But that's not how we communicate to patients. Anytime we're communicating a change to patients, it's about how this is going to be best for them. So you, you know you have this ultimate goal of getting over into the yoga studio. We know you're going to do it. You can do this slowly or fast. But just remember that people hate change. They are going to, you could give a, you could send out a letter, you could send out a text, you could have an, like flyers in clinic. And I think the more time that you give people to go like, wait, what? Because they haven't experienced it. It's going to be scary and crazy for them. So that's why we're just not going to give them a heads up. You're just going to kind of spring it on them. And I'll show you how I recommend doing that. Also get out of your head that this is not being done. So it might not be being done in the chiropractic offices in your area, but it is being done in hair salons. It's being done in physical therapy offices. I can't think of any other examples right now, but like an open service area is not... It's not this crazy necessarily thing. Like this is happening, especially in like pediatric physical therapy clinics. So it's happening. You just, and you know it's happening in chiropractic clinics. It's just not happening in your town in chiropractic clinics. Okay. So what I recommend is you are going to throw like a one day party. Okay. Now there's lots of like, this is a patient appreciation style day. Now the more stuff you give away, at this, the less people can complain. So like, for instance, we do a once a year 
uh, patient appreciation day where we give all free pediatric adjustments. All of our current patients can come in for a boost adjustment. Um, we have a bounce house. We have face paintings. We don't have giveaways, but like if you're doing this in the winter, if you want to do this sooner than later, you know, you might have some stuff inside, but like this, it, you know, so, and it doesn't have to be free. It can be hugely discounted. Um, in, and again, in Wisconsin, uh, if you're a cash clinic, you can do this. Like, make sure anytime that you're doing a free adjustment that you check with your legal things. But like, basically, you want an excuse that you are going to jam pack your schedule and that there's going to be stuff going on that makes this day super exciting. And therefore, the clinic flow needs to be a little different than normal. Okay, so you're when you're promoting this party, you're not talking about how it's going to be in a different space or anything like that. I think you see where I'm going here. So when you do the party, you before the party starts, you're going to set up your tables over in the adjusting or in the yoga studio. Okay, so make it cute. Don't make it weird. Really have it set up so it flows nice. And then there's communication for that day. You know, so like if you do have face painter, maybe like the face painting is in that room. You want to bring as many like things for fan, like kids to do in that room, new toys, like things like that, because what's going to happen is you're going to be able to directly show in a family, like, look how nice it is you getting adjusted right here and you have an eye line to your daughter over there in the corner and look she's playing with another kid and it's all like you're just so you don't want that room to just be adjusting tables it needs to be a fun room where the kids want to be um maybe even have like coffee in there so and like chairs where like people are sitting and waiting and talking and watching and it's just this like really great vibe okay you don't have to keep coffee in there. You're just trying to make a point. So during the event, the talk is going to be casual. You're not talking about like, surprise, we're keeping it. Again, this is just how I would manipulate my patients. <laughs> Did I say manipulate? Um, so at the event, you're going to have your CAs be the ones that are kind of like, oh, hey, like, welcome. We're uh, doing something new today because we needed a little different flow to make sure we can uh, get as many people on the schedule as possible. So we're actually adjusting over in the yoga studio today. And then, you know, casual talk on that day is like, yeah, I never, I didn't know how this would work, but there are some of the best chiropractic clinics in the country do this. So I thought that for this event, it would be cool to try out. You know, we're just like, huh, yeah, we're just trying it out. We wanted to see how the flow would be. We wanted parents to be able to see their kids playing while they got adjusted. And then you're going to bookend. Obviously, you can't do this for like your first five patients of the day. But as soon as you're kind of into the day, you know, so if your front desk really starts greeting someone with like, hey, we're actually trying something new for the party today, you know, Dr. McKenzie got advice uh, from some of the best pediatric clinics in the country who do more open adjusting. And so we're trying this today. Like, go have fun. There's refreshments, whatever. So she, your CA book starts it that way. And you're going to bookend it with like kind of keeping the communication around like this new space of like, and saying all of our patients so far have been loving the openness. Who knows? We might just keep it. Okay. And even if you don't say we might just keep it, you're planting the seed. It sounds so manipulating, but like, I don't have the bandwidth or time because I'm supposed to be fast to like, they're going, they might be going, this is weird. They might be going, this is not. But for those that are like, this is weird, telling them everybody else loves it. Like this is how marketing works. All the cool people say, wear these shoes. All the cool people have this phone. So like all of our patients are loving this for those that are like, oh, they are like, oh, okay. All right. Maybe, maybe I have a wrong opinion. Maybe I'm just being a prude. Like there, there's who knows what their subconscious will do. But okay. now what I like is I don't really care what day you do your party on. It could be the last day of the week. But like Monday comes and you just haven't gotten around to putting the tables back yet. 
Or, you know, if you, I mean, anytime I do a party like this, I will say the next day is exhausting, but it is more of an excuse that you just didn't have time to put the tables back. So like I would keep, so like if you throw this on a Wednesday and you're back on Thursday, you know, maybe keep some of those remnants, like for the patients who are coming Thursday that didn't come Wednesday, keep some of those remnants of the balloons or the confetti, like, oh, sorry, yesterday we had this bash. Like, so sorry you couldn't make it. Like, we moved the tables over here. We just haven't gotten back to putting them back. So I told you I would tell you what I would what I did when I was just closed room and I didn't have a big space. Um, and this is something that I do recommend to clinics that they need to get faster in the room. Okay, so like, hopefully, even if you were like, oh, I'm not, I don't have a big yoga space I'm moving into, like, you're still listening here, because this is good. A lot of people waste time going into like for like high volume by shutting the door. And if you have a traditional room, where there is a door on it, you can use an event like this. We took the doors off the closed rooms. So it was like a hallway. And then like a doorway into a room, but no door. And I just personally like having a reasonable excuse of why we took the doors off the hinges. Um, because you can't say, well, Jane, uh, when I shut the door, you have no idea how busy the clinic is and like to talk to me about your cat. So I need to stop the chit chat and get down to business faster. You can't say that. Uh, so having an excuse of like, Yep, uh, this was recommended to us by some really successful clinics. You know, always, any time that you can, letting them know you didn't make this up. It's not like you're flinging from the hip. Is that the phrase? Fling, shooting from the hip? Shoot, flinging from the waist? Somebody's doing something. Anyways, you didn't make this up, that this is what the best clinics in the country recommend. Now, if you are one of the best clinics listening and you don't have open adjusting, we're just telling them to say this, okay? Um, there's lots of different best clinics who do completely different things, but you are letting, the whole goal is, I didn't make this shit up. This isn't like, this was recommended by the best of the best. And this again, gets into their subconscious to trust this decision that you're making more. So for the closed rooms listening, find a way to get the doors off. That will shorten, you're not gonna obviously have open adjusting, but it will shorten the amount of time that you are in that room a million times. And we practice that way for like a year. And we use the same excuse like, oh my gosh, we just haven't gotten back to putting the doors on yet. Actually, patients, the dot, like that one is kind of hard to be like, oh, patients love not having a door. Um, but you can just be like, Honestly, we've found that the doctor wastes less time. So our patients are having to wait less uh, for the doctor to finish up in a room. You know, some patients will use the doctor's time for like non-healthcare related stuff. Like never you, Jane, but like some patients. And we found that that, that helps. And so we don't have to charge for extra long visits or whatever. Okay. So back to Mackenzie. So you've got this like post party vibe going right it's like the frat house the next morning maybe that's i don't know i think that's a fun analogy here um the keg the the beer stains are still having i don't know what kind of party you're going to throw for your patients i mean i know that if i wanted to spring something on my patients with a big bold move a keg would help we are in wisconsin here jokes i joke i joke um, okay, so the after communication, uh, again, your front desk is going like, hey, Sarah, just so you know, your appointment today is actually going to be over in the open area. We moved the tables over there yesterday or like late last week for the party. And it, we just haven't gotten around to moving them back. And the doctor's kind of experimenting. Like so many people loved it that the doctor's actually experimenting to see if this improves the customer patient experience. So we're just we're just trying it out. So like you're not like only saying like, oh, because you, like, you don't want to say, oh, we're going back. But it's like, oh, we haven't gotten around to it. So honestly, we're just kind of we're just kind of continuing to see how the doctor and the patients like this. Then you, your table talk is going to be very focused around not their nervous system for the first, at least the first visit. Okay. So like every time that you're adjusting someone in that space, 
again, you're holding this really upbeat, like, yeah, you know, a lot of the best clinics in the country do this. You know, it was recommended that actually our patients would enjoy this more because we see so many children. It creates this more communal education. You know, if I'm giving a stretch to a patient over there for a hip flexor, you know, or I'm giving breastfeed, you know, you're going to, you cater the examples you're getting based on the patient. So if I'm talking to a pregnant patient, I'm going to say like, yeah, you know, a lot of, it's this more communal educational space. So like at one of your appointments, um, while you're waiting, I may be giving breastfeeding advice uh, to another woman or, you know, talking about tongue tethers or things of that, that may be contributing to the baby's colic. Or, you know, if it's a dude, you know, you can go like, you know, while I'm finishing up with one patient, maybe I'm giving them rotator cuff exercises and you didn't even know that like we can help with shoulders. I do always, I do have a private adjusting room and I would recommend for the transition to keep one of those other rooms. Like you don't have to keep it long-term if you don't want to, because I, so few of people will use it, but like we do have a space. It ends up being used for breastfeeding more often than anything, but we have a space where we'll say like, you know, obviously if you came in and you had something personal that you wanted to talk to me about, we would just go there. Like, but for the most part, you know, most of our patients don't talk about like these deeply embarrassing personal stuff. It is health conversations that as a whole, multiple people would benefit from learning from. And that's why they continue to be one of the highest recommended layouts for a family practice that is focused on educating patients and giving like health advice. Okay. So that's just your vibe. Okay. And then you, when you just, you never go back, <laughs> you just never go back and the confetti is gone. And that patient comes back a second time and they're like, Oh, we're still over here, you know, for a week or two the it gets a little obviously less we haven't had time and much more like we are getting really great feedback the doctor loves how much education she can give and the patients love that they don't have these blind spots with their kids the kids seem more at ease getting adjusted because they're not locked into a room and it's just really fits with our culture that we're trying to create at the at this clinic of this community loving family feel. So your just verbiage keeps going that way and you, you never look back. Now, the last thing I'll touch on is the new patient tour. This is important um, to, you know, so a lot of the communication that we just said needs to be included in your patient tour. So anytime, if you're not doing a new patient tour, I would recommend you do this. This is your CA's opportunity to really like pump you up as the doctor and the clinic. This is not like bathrooms are there, vitamins are here, like da 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 da. It's much more like, you know, this is our philosophy on care. This is our room that we use for this. Uh, you know, if you're ever here and you need to breastfeed, like we have snacks and water, like it's really just painting this picture of why your clinic is different and special. Okay. It's not bathrooms on the left. So for the new patient tour, you know, like now, okay, you've transitioned. Now some of your patients, let's say, okay, so worst case scenario, patients realize this isn't going back and I don't like it. You know, your front desk has permission, if you're okay with it, to say like, that's no problem. Do you want to get adjusted in the private room? Like you can still do that. For um, when we moved over, I did, so we transitioned about 300 to 350 people a week. I don't have like how many individuals that was in a month. We transitioned from these like kind of private rooms into this open adjusting and barefoot. And we lost, I think five people, five, maybe three or four, honestly. I think I'm rounding up with five. They were just like, it's too much. It's too much change. I can't do it. Now, I guarantee you 90% of them were spooked of like, oh, oh, shoes off. Uh, oh, no privacy. Awesome. <laughs> like, 
That's great. I love that for you. But we only lost a few. And then we did have like two who were like private room. Yep. That is what I want. Yeah. And they hung out there for like two years and now they just get it. They did like for two years. They got adjusted in the private room. It was like one or two people. It was not a big deal. It was fine. I, I liked that patient. So it was worth keeping them. Um, but, you know, and then now they're out in the open because they're like, oh, it really isn't a big deal. So for the new patient tour, you do want to be addressing like, this is why we do open adjusting. You want to mention that this is what most family and pediatric or communal based chiropractors do. It's kind of like if you've ever been to physical therapy, how they have that big open gym. Um, you know, it's really creating this atmosphere for education, learning, and um, community. And we love it. And then you move on. You just touch on it. You just touch on it. So they're like, oh. And then usually our person will say like, we do have a private room. So if there's ever anything that you want to talk to the doc about that is more personal, um, you don't need to do that here. You just come to the front desk, let us know, and we'll, we'll take you to the private room. Um, and then it's kind of up to you. We have not had a new patient since we moved into this open space. We have not had a new patient who has said like, I will take the private room all the time. Um, you might have some old patients, not old senior, but like previous patients, like I said, for a while that do that. But like, I think people, people might not sign on because we're just a little too like family vibey, but you know, the, where they really are people. And that's kind of what, what I'll end on is like, I love that you're making this decision for you because this is your clinic and you are going to, when you do this, you are going to attract those people that are so in alignment with what you're trying to build. So good luck. We are all rooting for you, Mackenzie. Um, like I said, if you have a question that you want to send into the podcast, click that link below. If you are not subscribed to the podcast, I would love if you would do that. That just in, that just helps us out. Apple loves loves when a podcast is subscribed to um, that tells them that you care and you like our episodes. So I hope that you, you know, just continue to thrive in practice. And I am always here for you. Slide into my DMs. But like the surest way to make sure you get a question answered is submitting it. So good luck, She Slayers. And until next week, bye. Bye.